Life Drawing by Alexander Rishkin. Let's continue with tonal rendering. When rendering tonal values, you need to keep in mind that no change in tone is accidental, but depends on the body's anatomy and skeletal construction beneath the skin. Every muscle has its volume and shape that defines planes of the figure on the surface. Such planes have different angles towards the light, and therefore different tonal values. Needless to say, only by knowing human anatomy will you be able to do so. You can learn such an approach from the old masters, such as Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, Raphael, Rubens, and many others. We do not see what we do not know. That is why you have to draw from knowledge rather than copy from life without understanding why tonal values are different. Aerial perspective is not obvious when you observe a model. Nevertheless, we do not draw from observation, but from knowledge. If you feel that your knowledge of anatomy could be improved, check out the Anatomy Masterclass, where you can learn fast anatomy for artists in the comfort of your home. Big scale drawing often scares contemporary artists who are used to drawing from photographs. Even those artists who do large artworks often trace figures or portraits outlines using projectors. While there's nothing wrong in using photo equipment in such cases, an artist must know a human body's proportions and rules of perspective that apply to figurative art to avoid the distortions that photographs have. Such large formats are actually very interesting to draw. You can easily go into details that would be too challenging to depict otherwise. Also, classical one- or two-point perspective would not work well in this case. The old masters knew this very well and were drawing foreshortened figures using orthogonal or parallel perspective. They depicted foreshortening of lengths while keeping proportions of width intact. For example, in his painting, Mantegna portrayed the figure of Christ in parallel perspective where sides of the body are parallel to each other. Yet the support is depicted in one-point perspective that gives a clear picture of the spatial relationship and a realistic view. Great artists like Raphael and Michelangelo also used the orthographic view. Somehow this know-how was lost during last 500 years and contemporary art books are full of grotesque figures in perspective. Here's an example from one well-respected author who teaches drawing figures using common one-point perspective. You can see why such an approach is erroneous when comparing the two figures in green and red to each other. One has a very small head and exaggerated legs, while the other has a huge upper body. So, instead of drawing what an artist sees, he or she must draw what one knows. Always have some creative task in mind. Life drawing could be done just for the sake of practicing, but in many cases, artists have a very specific purpose for such exercises. For example, you can do life drawing with the aim of finding an interesting pose for your composition, or to study anatomy, or to study individual features of a portrait, and so on. There are many extant life drawings from the old masters that feature torsos without heads or some limbs, or even smaller parts like hands and fingers. Whatever the task, it is better to learn from nature, making fast sketches and long studies of whatever you need for your figurative artworks.